In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a weighted moving average using Excel. I have monthly data of house sales. So uh, this is monthly data from August 2014 all the way to coming up here to December 2021. And in our second column here, we have the number of houses sold in that region for each month. I have the weights that I'm going to be using in my weighted moving average listed right here. So I have W1, 40%, that would be applied to the most recent data. W2, 30%, that would be applied to the second most recent data. 20% to the third most recent data. And 10% to the fourth most recent data. So you can see that this is a four span moving average with these weights. Now, because it's a four span moving average, I would not do a forecast for those first four spans as there would not be enough historical data. In the fifth span, there would be four periods of previous data. So this is where I'll start my forecast. Now the forecast here is going to be my W1 of 40%, and I'll apply dollar signs to that so that it's a locked in reference, times number of houses sold in the previous month or the one month prior, I should say at 127 for November 2014, plus the second weight of 30%, locking that reference in as well with my uh, dollar signs, times the observed value two months prior, so in this case that would be October 2014, plus my third weight of 20%, again F4 to apply those dollar signs, times the third, three periods ago, September 2014's data, plus finally our fourth weight, F4 for the dollar signs, times four periods ago, we had an observation of 128. Enter, and then I simply can drag this through the rest of the table. Now for many, this exercise of W1 times one period prior plus W2 times the second period prior, etc., is a bit of a tedious exercise, especially if you're dealing with um, larger span of weights. It can be a bit um, problematic and create more human error. There is another way we can do this. What we have essentially done here is we have added up the product of two arrays. So one might think to use the sum product, and that's a great idea, but be careful if you choose to go that way. I'll demonstrate here the issue with it, so I'm going to do it the wrong way first. So doing this in this neighboring cell here, I know it says error, but I'm gonna do the forecast, and in fact, I'm gonna do it wrong, so it will be an error. I would try sum product, and I'll take our array of weights, comma, the array of houses sold. And what you can see is that I got a different value. Now the reason for this is that when it's doing this sum product, it's taking 40% as the first value, and because I selected this as my array, 128 as the first value. So the top to the top, the second to the second. Now this is opposite to what we want. We wanted 40% applied to the most recent data, the one at the bottom of what I have highlighted here, 30% applied to the second most recent, 20% to the third most recent, and 10% applied to the fourth most recent, or the one that we see at the top here. So the way we can work around this so that we can still use some product is by rearranging the order of these weights. If I rearrange them so that I'll have my fourth weight first, and then my third weight, then my second weight, and then my first weight, so fourth to first, now the array is listed in a fashion that correlates with how I want the weights to be applied. 10% would be applied to 128, and 40% would be applied to my most recent observation of 127. So as long as you make this adjustment, sum product is an excellent choice. So let's try this again now with sum product of using this array, and this time I'm going to put in my dollar signs, comma, the number of houses sold for the previous four periods. 
And what I get is the exact same value that I had in my forecast before. And if I drag it down, I'll get the exact same forecasts that I did when I manually selected each weight and multiplied them with each uh, observation. Now going down to the bottom of my data, I can see that when I auto-filled, it extended well beyond my last observation. The last forecast for which this formula would apply would be the first period where there is no observation in January 2022. After that, if I were to continue to use this formula, you can see that I'm referencing cells without observations. So that's ineffective. Instead, what I will do is I will take that first forecast without an observation, the one from January 2022, and I will lock in that reference, applying my dollar signs, F4, and then drag that through. Because this is a stationary forecast, I will have the same forecast for all periods uh, from January 2022 onward. And that's how we would do a weighted moving average forecast.